Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that song is called The Church. We see him, of course. The Church One Foundation. The Church. The Church One Foundation. And it's, 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 uh, uh, this particular rendition was by um, Christ Church. Bellingham, Christ Church Bellingham. I don't even know where that is. Anyway, but that's a um, fantastic um, a solo in there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, the Bible tells us that there's, there's no other foundation that can be laid than that which is laid already. Jesus said, I'm building my church. He's building his church and the gates of hell <clears throat> cannot prevail against the church that he's building. So the question is, are you part of that church? Am I part of that church? Is my community, is my uh, um, yeah, congregation or the church I attend, is it part of that invincible church that Jesus promised to put on planet Earth? Is your denomination part of it? Or not? Because anything that is not part of that this church is vulnerable and susceptible to the powers of hell. And the, and the gates of hell. So that's why it is necessary that we conform our uh, ways, our manner of living and manner of uh, being to the parameters of these invisible yet visible okay um what does it say invisible it's, it's, it's a spiritual body it's a cosmic body to that extent it is not it, it can't say okay this is the measurement of the church this is the population of the church um in the in the ultimate sense and uh, you can count the number of uh, um, the membership or the, the strength of the membership in a particular church or denomination or, or ministry or fellowship but the, the body of christ as an entirety as an entity you cannot um, estimate no one can actually only god knows those who are his so and that says yes it's, it's invisible in that says but yet visible in this uh, local expressions um but yes to be part of that invisible church, we must conform our lives and our uh, churches and ministries to the parameters and the pattern and the wisdoms of Christ as enshrined and expressed in the, this church that he says he's building. Okay. I move on. And I say that to say um, that as, as a parting shot, so to say. By the way, have I introduced myself? I haven't. Okay. Well, let me just introduce the topic. We are. Um, I'm dealing with this topic today, uh, which is, uh, I call it um, a countercultural church in a corrupt polity. 
a countercultural church in a corrupt polity. So, I let me formally now start by saying good evening, everybody watching. God bless you. Um, may God um, uh, just help us to to express His heart to uh, this evening. And as you listen and as you contribute also from your insight, nobody has the monopoly of knowledge and wisdom. So, uh, as we contribute to and interact together, may God help us and more particularly or more importantly to position us and um, uh, yeah, or orientate us to where he wants us to be spiritually speaking uh, so that uh, yeah, we adopt the right disposition to uh, uh, has to be counted worthy to be part of that church okay the part of his family All right so i am reverend sirido kerry and this is the sentinel which is a weekly wonderful the sentinel is the, is the, the media arm of uh, city gate ministries international okay let's let's let's, let's uh, get on with this yes now i've mentioned the title the church supposed to be a counterculture, uh, uh, different from the world. The Jesus said to us, "They say you are that, that 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 we are in the world, but not of the world." Okay, we are in the world, but we do not belong to the world. In fact, the Colossians one that said that we we've, we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness. From the powers of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. So we've been translated. Yet we're here. Okay? Um, yeah, so we are, in a sense, we belong to two nations, so to say. Also, you, know, you belong to your natural nation here, but also you belong to the heavenly, you know, the, your heavenly nation, your, your heavenly kingdom, which is primarily where we are supposed to. Uh, our, our, where as the, the Bible says our citizenship is from is of, is of heaven okay or from heaven now if that is the case it's important that our allegiance our primary allegiance in fact uh, it will not be wrong for me to say that our soul allegiance should be towards that kingdom and his king, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. So anything therefore we do here, our engagement with the, our nations here below, our at least nations and uh, cultures and societies should be therefore as directed and dictated by the values the mandate from the heavenly kingdom and his king otherwise we will live a life that is uh, double faced Okay, we become double-minded. We become like a cultural monster. Like a bat. That's neither a bird nor a mammal. <laughs> we become neither hot or cold. I know what the Bible says in Revelation. That he will do this to such people. He will, Jesus said that he will spew them out of his, vomit them out of his mouth. We don't want to be such. A countercultural church in a corrupt polity. The, the Bible says that the whole world lies in darkness. You know, lies in, in, the, in, in, in the embrace of the wicked one. The whole world, the whole world, the systems of this world is is decaying 
is corrupted and it's corrupting. So it's not just that it's corrupt, it's also corrupting. It can corrupt you. And so that's why we have to walk in a way that is circums circumspect. We need to be, be careful how we how we tread. We don't walk carelessly. Because <laughs> and, uh, the Bible again says that uh, I have this uh, something called of good manners. Um, I, I forgot that something something called of good manners. You know, uh, bad com is it evil communication? Yes, evil communication corrupts good manners. That's what the Bible says. So in this world, it's possible to be as a Christian, as a as a godly person, to be corrupted. But that's not God's will for us. That's why we are warned that, you know, we should be mindful of the fact that we are not of this world. We are warned against friendship with the world, which is enmity with God. You see, if any man is a friend to this world, is he, is putting premium and 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 uh, putting the. Uh, 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 the, the, the uh, importance of more, more value, a lot of uh, much value, inordinate value on the things of this world. That person cannot be the, the love of the Father is not in that person. I said the things that are in the world that are the lust of the you know, of of of, of uh, the flesh, uh, the, the, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Those, those three things. They are the things that in, the, in this world. These are the things that motivate the economy, motivate. Uh, the, the, the the social interactions motivate most of the things political uh, 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 ambition and, and political activities of this world is those three things so how do we engage as a countercultural a church that's meant to be to stand out to be a light okay let, let, let's let's go to scriptures first um, Matthew chapter 5 Matthew 5 says Let's see verse 13 to 16. 13 to 16 and KJV. New King James Version. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, <coughs> how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled on the foot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. You hear that? Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But in, on a lamp stand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. These are the words of Jesus. Let's read the end of the First Timothy 1. Two, three, perhaps four. I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peace, uh, peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and uh, holiness. Say, so this is good and pleases God, our Savior. Who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth? Now, book five, let me read up to five. Say, for there is one God, only one God, people, only one God, and one mediator, one intermediary, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. This is our message. Okay. Right. So, what are we saying here? The first place I read, that's in Matthew basically tells us uh, where we stand who we are 
you know, our, our identity and uh, our uh, mission. So we are the salt of the earth. We are, you know, we are here, the salt of the earth. We are here to, to, to give flavor and, uh, and help to preserve um, and hold back corruption in this world. That's what salt does. Salt is uh, uh, antiseptic. As, uh, salt is, you know, is, gives flavor. Uh, salt, uh, yes, heals salt, holds back decay. Salt preserves, yeah. You know, um, since if the salt loses its flavor, then what's the point? How shall it be seasoned? Um, and then it tells us that we are the light of the world. We are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Okay. We are meant to give light, you know, to the world. It's like um, a lighthouse uh, with, with the light, you know, that guide um, sailors. Yes. Um, Say, let your light, let our light, we should let our light so, light so shine before people, men, that they may see our good works. We are called unto good works. A lot of places in the Bible says so, titles and the different places, you know, and glorify. And people see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Our God is our Father and is in heaven. Praise God. So, so that, that, that's what we are, that's what we're called to do. So that when, as we are left here, and like Jesus said in a uh, prayer in, in John 17, that He did not ask the Father to take us away from the world, but that He will keep us, preserve us by, you know, um, by, by His power, the power of His name, while we are in the world, to reflect Him, to carry out the, you know, whatever, the mandate He, he, he let, you know, um, uh, left you know, us with. While we are on the world, we should not be subsumed by the world. We should not, you know, assimilate the values and the corruptive, you know, the corruptive characteristics of the world. Okay. Now, why, 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 why what motivated this, this talk? One of the things that um, uh, kind of stirred this in my heart was i think today actually um i or yesterday or today the the bishop no yesterday at bishop oye Kong, i read about at bishop oye Kong, the archbishop of um the anglican is that, um in uh, anglican church he said is is that the catholic i can't remember now but it's uh, archbishop oye Kong. he's uh he's based in abuja um he says something about Nigerian election. Okay, he said um, that the the announced president elect should not be sworn in before the court the, the court decides the tribunal and the supreme court uh, they decide who the real winner of the 2023 elections in Nigeria um, or presidential election. Um, is but that's, uh, that, that three people contesting for it. So he said that, and he didn't say anything nasty, horrible. You know, just 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 said that the fact that he's not that he's confused, he doesn't know who 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 really won, and that's his opinion. And then he was attacked by somebody, uh, um, a, a spokesperson of the, of the ruling party. He was attacked and he was insulted. And I see that pattern happening in Nigeria a lot. It may, it may be happening in other nations where the, the, the church and the leaders are asked to just conform and keep quiet. Okay? Conform and keep quiet. And um, they are almost that like they are caught in a catch-22 situation in a kind of um, uh, cordon, is it cordon drop, you call it, where it, it, like they, if they do, they are, they are damned if they do, they are damned if they don't. 
uh, not just uh, as Bishop Oyeko, um, some other ministers of God have vilified David Oyedepo. Uh, other ones are just attacked, you know, by people because of what they they said or the position they've taken. And so these attacks come from even believers. Okay, now and that's why okay, I'm, I'm prompted to kind of res respond in the sense that first of all, in a few elections ago, I think in 2015 or so, maybe 2019, but 2015 definitely, I wrote something on Facebook and I, and I did ask a question whether, as I, as I said, is the church, is the, is politics the last gate of hell? that can prevail against the Church of Christ? What made me say that? Because that election, 2015 election, see, seemed to, have, uh, to, to divide the body of Christ into different partisan camps. Those who support the current president and those who support the, the the former president. Good Lord Jonathan. And that was unfortunate because whereas, yes, every Christian, including men of God and women of God, they have the right to, as citizens of their country, they have the right to I say, okay, I'm going to vote for this person or that person. Based, hopefully, on some uh, um, clear and um, noble sense of values. So yes, on, on, on those on those basis, we can say, look, I prefer, for example, in this country where I'm, I can say I prefer to vote for Labour. Another person will say I prefer to vote for, uh, vote uh, um, because of this party. Or in America, a Democrat, a Democrats, uh, Democratic Party. Or another person might say, I'd like to uh, vote for Republicans. Found no problem. As long as the things that influence our political choices or how we you know our electoral behavior are the things that the, the God approves as set out in the Bible. So we can, we can, we can, we can allow such differences. But when Christians begin to pitch camps, men of God begin to pitch their tent with uh, uh, different parties based on tradition, based on ethnicity, based on even religion, yeah, based on what personal uh, um, interests like who gives the money then that becomes a sad testimony and we saw that a lot um in 2015 election elections in nigeria in america we see that a lot we see people we are you know yes men and women of god but you begin to see that okay these people they have either racist inclination you know white supremacist inclination or black um, irredentist inclination and 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 those those parameters are not biblical basis for christians let alone men and women of god who that represent christ on on, on earth before men those are not the, the, the reasons and the factors that should influence their political choice. That happened a lot in Nigeria too, you know, and it was a shame. It was a real shame. I could remember one particular minister, he came up with his, you know, you know the, the ministerial, uh, the, the cassock and all that, and the, uh, what that the what that dog, dog, um, dog color, he called it, you know, and it was on TV spouting just just you no know, that this this like the partisan or political you know partisan political you know 
sentiments, just you no, know, nothing more, nothing biblical, nothing, nothing based on like saying, okay, these are these are values that I that 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 align with righteousness. No, it just just politics and but I know that this man, I, I, what is, I was I, I was disgusted. And please don't tell me don't judge. Please don't tell me don't judge. The Bible says the righteous that the spiritual man judges all things. Yes, he himself is not judged. So <clears throat> a spiritual man, a spiritual woman has a has a way or, or, or the the the, <clears throat> the the template to to look at this and analyze them and, and say no this is right this is wrong but coming down to this last election 2023 election presidential election um i saw something different I saw that as the time approached or was approaching, there seemed to be a clear line of demarcation. It was it was you know clear choice to be made between what no more people consider as right and wrong. For example, and I'm not being pleased, I'm not being I am not being partisan here. God knows I'm not. Because in every party there are Christians, there are non-Christians, there are you know, Muslims and different people, there are good people, there are bad people. Okay. But in terms of the way some parties, some politicians went about their campaign, their choice of, uh, of uh, um, some political parties, you know, went about in terms of how they choose, who they choose as their as their flag bearers, who they choose as the running mates. Um, you see, there are you notice that there are things that come to fore some some things that should matter should concern the citizens every normal sensible intelligent citizen values like equity like justice like fairness like integrity like track record like whereas nobody is is, um, is sinless and, and nobody is um, um, a saint in that arena, but there are questions, things that are, there are things that came up in this, in the election that should agitate every Christian mind. So as all these things were surfacing, then. Um, some Christians and uh, um, a lot of church leaders of um, different denominations, even include, include some non-Christians like uh, some uh, Muslim leaders, some and uh, other 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 kind of religious. They 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 kind of who are fair-minded. They took a stand. They said no 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 no. Whatever whoever we vote, whatever we vote for, however we vote. But not no, we are not voting for this. We're not voting for that. We're not voting for things that that neglect equity. We're not voting for things that um, uh, um, um, uh, that that kind of makes light of corruption. We're not voting for uh, or for people or for or for people or parties that um, yeah, make light of corruption. We're not voting for uh, people who promote violence and who promote denigrate the uh, other candidates in order to to um, advance themselves so we are so there are so some of this is where we are kind of standing out in clear you know clear uh, um, relief and so the church leaders a lot of them yeah members of CAN and, and PFN and other uh, uh, Christian bodies they took a stand some Muslim leaders took a you no know, they took, took, a, took a, 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 a position on the matter, some some ethnic leaders, you know, um, 
people like you know my respect for Adebayo, for example, uh, the, the general Shego uh, Basanjo retired, and all that. They took a stand. They said, "No, oh, this is what should be done. This is you know, to for Nigeria to move forward." And Christians, we are all over the world. In fact, Nigerians and non-Nigerians, we are praying for a new Nigeria to emerge because Nigeria, as we have it today, has suffered from a lot of trauma, a lot of bad reputation, and all that. So we pray as that city comes to mind. Can a nation be born in a day? As soon as Zion tra traverses, it brings forth, you know, uh, 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 its child, and so on and so forth. So we we are looking for a new nation. Now, those of you who are well known Nigerians, please take this as as, as a, a kind of a lesson. That whenever politics, you know, is time for political electionary in your country. The church, as a Christian, you should know the things that should inform your church. You must, you must, by the way, by the way, you must uh, um, participate. Okay? You must participate. You should not, you should not, you should not be indolent. You should not uh, be um, irresponsible like some in Nigeria where they say, they, they, they say to them, oh, we don't know, well, don't know, God will tell me who to vote for uh, 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 when I appear at the post. That is, that is ignorance. God is not going to tell you. Who to, you don't, stop being lazy. Pick up their manifestos and study with their manifestos. Study the characters that are before you who are campaigning for your, for your vote and do the right thing. It is lazy to say, expect God to wake you up in the night and tell you who to vote for. Of course he may. But after you have done your due diligence by studying and looking, okay, Father, no, I look at this manifesto, they all look the same. Um, this is promising this. But who, who is telling the truth? Who is, who is telling the truth? Who is not telling the truth? Lord, look at, yes, God can direct you, and He does. But when you hear, you see the clear things, that, that very clear sets of, uh, um, uh, let's say, conditions and factors and issues. You know, ethical issues that are highlighted that are standing before you. I say, God, come and come and tell you what. Then you have some other people who say to you, Oh, no, no, nobody, no, no, that they are all the same. That they, um, uh, what they say it again. Some people, they are Christians, they are all the same. That they know only God will come and yeah, deliver us from the Nigeria, from save Nigeria and you know, change Nigeria. Only God, only God will do it. I'm not voting. That is so stupid. That is so silly. God will change Nigeria and you're not voting. And then you have a man to complain. You, when things are not going right, you, you complain. But I would like to believe that majority, majority of believers, they were con uh, you know, conscious and um, uh, um, responsible. And they took a stand. Took a stand. You know, went and voted for, you know, uh, for who they wanted to vote for. And the church leaders this time around, they spoke with largely one voice. For which they are being criticized. And that's one of the reasons why I'm saying this. Well, I'm discussing this now. They were criticized attacked, accused of religious bigotry. They accused them of um, religious war. They accused Ad Adeboye. Adeboye was, was uh, um, discussing with them uh, uh, another political uh, no, not Adeboye with the chapel. David Oyedepo was um, in, a, in a private discussion with another political uh, leader uh, and, uh, who, who said, oh, this is a religious war, and they made that a, a, an issue. And they attack at the way. Um, uh, yeah, they still attack at the way. They attack at uh, the uh, And all that other religious leaders. For speaking out and saying, look, for example, for example, they understand that, I mean, anybody watching Nigeria, that Christianity is in a um, battle, in a battle for is a uh, is very existence in Nigeria. It's an existential struggle. 
because a lot of Christians have been killed over this number of years, particularly under the leadership of uh, 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 President Muhammad Buhari, and without any redress, Christians get killed. It didn't start today. Churches are burned down. You know, men and women are raped. Some are sold. Leah Sharibu is still, is still, only God knows where, where she is still today. The, the, the other people that uh, she was um, abducted with by terrorists, the government negotiated their release, leaving her behind. A young girl, I think she was, was, I think she was 14 when she was captured. Now, Christian suffered. Was the one that uh, that, that was killed and 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 uh, and, 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 and born, you know, um, in Sokoto. Deborah, Deborah Samuel was killed, lynched by a mob. You know, organized by his classmates, classmates. And up to today, today, government has done nothing about that. The people who even identified themselves, they that the one that set, set her ablaze on TV. No, 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 nothing is done to them. So, so for, for a Christian leader to not to say, please, 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 we are not asking for, we are asking for, uh, um, we, don't, we are not comfortable with a Muslim Muslim ticket, for example. We are not comfortable with a Muslim Muslim ticket. Let, if you have a Muslim presidential candidate, they have a Christian, a Christian uh, um, uh, uh, running mate, vice versa, which is equity. But they, they, were, they are called names, they are insulted. People that kill people during the election, up to that, nothing is to happen to them. But the people who are tortured and, and who, who just want to do right and vote right and see Nigeria move forward, they are the ones that are calling names. So that yeah, so uh, that that's what prompted this discussion. Because it's easy to pick on Christians, I mean of God. It, it didn't happen today. But in history tells us, Christian history tells us that uh, not just not just Christian history, history. That uh, there was that mad emperor, Nero. Nero Nero set 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 Rome a ablaze and 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 and, and accused Christians. Of being responsible, and Christians were we are we are we are killed in in in, in, in large numbers. It's not the first time when things happen, when things go wrong in society, Christians are picked upon. Christian leaders are picked upon. The prophets, even in the Bible, there was a time when was that? Yes, uh, things were so bad in Samaria that Christians were sorry, um, that, that that women were eating their children, negotiating. About how to, you know, uh, um, cook cook their children and, and, and share with their neighbor, and uh, next time the neighbor will, will will cook their children and uh, share share with them too. I don't know. So that was happening. Terrible things. So there was a dispute between two women. And the one said, "Look, oh, I brought my son, and uh, we killed my son and ate, and and, and then uh, this woman refused to bring her son. The king, an ungodly king, for that matter." He, he was so incensed. They said, this is happening in my kingdom. Okay, what do I, what, what, what's the solution? Go and get the prophet. I, no, no, I'm going to kill the prophet. That's the, that's the solution. So, men of God, women of God have been a target in, the, in societies when things go wrong. And yet, when they now speak out to ensure that we don't, don't get there, they are also vilified. That's unfair. Oh, I said that's unfair. I said I'm expecting fairness from a corrupt system. No, I'm not expecting fairness, but I, I want to say it. It's unfair. Christians are, are the ones who pray for peace of a nation. They pray for the peace of the nation. They pray that uh, they pray for the like uh, the Bible tells us here. We read earlier. Say say that um, we should pray for kings. I urge you then, you know, 
first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. We pray for all our citizens, those those who believe, those who don't believe. We pray for the kings. We pray you know, that it might, might be well with, the, with people who are who run our council, who run our, our, our different um, uh, um, institutions. We pray for them so that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Who doesn't want that? But when things go wrong, the same Christians are the ones that are picked upon for persecution, for harassment. I will see that in the Middle East. I did a series of white Christians being persecuted, you know, about persecutions, uh, persecution against Christians in different parts of the world. And I ask why? There's no other sensible reason other than you know, what, what, what the devil inspired them to do. And, and for their own self gratification. The Bible tells us uh, in um, uh, the book of Acts that uh, is it uh, Herod, you know, took James and killed James, the brother of John, and saw that he pleased the Jews. Yeah, he's you know, he's killing, executing uh, James, pleased the Jews. So what did he do? Let me grab Peter. How will the people be pleased that a, a, a mad, mad leader, you know, executed somebody for nothing? He pleased them. And so because he pleased them, because of this populist uh, 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 approval, this pop he, he, he picked Peter to, to, to execute. Thank God for the angels that intervened to rescue Peter. Following the prayers of of of, uh, of the saints, so I'm saying that Christians all different, and that's why also Christians then have to be careful. And I'm warning the uh, you know some of those ones that some Christians, some so-called apostles and prophets, who we are campaigning against, for example, they are campaigning against certain ethnic uh, group in Lagos. Some Christians, pastors. Jesus sent you to do that. They are kind of like, uh, no, uh, 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 don't allow uh, uh, these people to to, to vote. Uh, the, um, uh, the the job, you know, don't give them jobs. And on our, the, the Christians, pastors, they have congregation. I have one that called himself a prophet. Was 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 you know, that is congregation. That's it. It should fall for your bats. That don't have to be countercultural in a corrupt. You are you are being corrupted. That you are corrupting. You are participating in the corruption that is society. But I say kudos for those who have stood out and spoke out against injustice and unfairness. That try to sensitize Christians to their civic responsibilities without discriminating against non Christians. They call them of religious war. By the way, do you, okay. Okay, let, let, let's wait. Do you think left for any any sensible Christian in Nigeria or anywhere that they would prefer a more a Christian Christian, you know, that the they they, 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 they prefer a situation where Christians occupy every post and leave Muslims out? I mean, I'm, I'm talking about the most fundamentalist of Christians. Would they even think of that? In Nigeria, for example, that, that's my country. I know that Nigeria, you know, uh, that no Christian would think of, no, we will occupy everything, occupy the army, occupy the police, occupy every, uh, everywhere, and not allow Muslims to, to, um, uh, I don't know, allow Muslims any, any space in that country. No, no Christians is mad enough to think that way. But that's, that's what some, some of these people, are, you, know, you know, some of the, not all Muslims, but some Muslim leaders, they say openly on TV, and yet nobody's calling them you know, uh, bigots. It's the Christians that spoke for justice, for fairness, and for righteousness that they're calling bigots. They're accused of bigotry, including some so called Christians whose God is their belly, who can be corrupted. Let me try and round up. The church, therefore, what is our role? Yeah, we mentioned earlier to be light, shine as light, 
to pray for the nation. If we say we should pray, we we'll pray and make intercessions, petitions, intercessions, thanksgiving to be made for all people, as we read in First Timothy chapter two. Say for kings and all those in authority. Uh, incidentally, <coughs> yesterday was the coronation of um, uh, former Prince Charles, King Charles the Third. Yeah, this is a, a nice moment from that event. This is on me. Okay? Yeah. So yesterday, lovely, 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 lovely. And a very, um, very powerful, um, very memorable event imbued with super symbolism. Um, yeah. What's our duty? Pray for the king. Pray for, we pray for King Charles. Please pray for him and other leaders in the, in, 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 the, in the UK as well as other world leaders. That's our role as Christians. So that we, we have an atmosphere of peace where people People who say um, that that we leave other place, that you no, know, those not that we may live peacefully, peaceful, live peaceful and quiet lives. Yeah, we don't because our atmosphere of war, the gospel cannot uh, we be kind of kind of um, uh, impeded. We live peacefully, quiet lives. Everybody do, you know, do your business. The society runs well. Say that, that is good. Yeah, the righteous people will flourish, will do well. You no know, godly people will 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 have the latitude to to express their godliness. That is good and pleasing to our, our God. You know. So that's our duty. We also need to live the life. You know, as the shining light, we don't just live as light. And sort in this world. One of the things we also do, Romans 13 tells us about even uh, um, to be subject to, you know, to obey the, the, the law of the land. In Romans 13, we obey the laws of the land. So we not just pray, but we also obey as, you know, as good citizens, including paying our taxes. That means we should honor all men. Yeah? Honor all men. We respect people. That's part of living as light. We value our neighbors. We we'll be good neighbors. As a church, we must maintain our integrity. The Bible says, let, let those who name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. We must maintain our integrity as a church and maintain and you know the integrity not just of of our essence as the body of Christ but also the the our allegiance to Christ as the king and his kingdom so anything that then, then comes in it comes um in conflict with that you know then, then we know where our primary, where our primary allegiance is, and of course that would inevitably lead to uh, to, to uh, persecution, which which again we should not shake from. We should maintain the integrity of the message of the gospel. We preach the word of God. We call sin what is sin, and we call good what is good. We take we maintain our moral stance and not shake from it. Yet loving people. We continue with our mission, which is both prophetic and pastoral and priestly, of course. Prophetic means that we speak against that which is evil. We, we don't keep quiet. We speak against that which is evil. With respect. John the Baptist got into trouble for speaking against that which is evil. Elijah confronted Ahab. 
and and denounce uh, his, his uh, wicked um, acts. Daniel challenged uh, uh, the and and there was the Bethesda. <coughs> That you that you break their will, you say break your wickedness by doing good. Jesus himself, you know, confronted evil. That's part of our prophetic rule. If we speak with it. So anybody that says to you, Christians should not talk. Christians that oh, you are dabbling into politics by speaking. No, 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 no. You dabble into politics. If you dabble into partisan politics by so yeah, because I belong to this camp. You you you, def you defend that camp regardless of what you've done. Then that is wrong. You have been a supporter of evil. <clears throat> but if you see what is wrong in your society, or speak speak against it. Be bold and speak against it, and let nobody cow you. Know, cow you. Speak against it. Thank God again for those Nigerian uh, uh, Christian leaders who, regardless of their race, uh, their, their ethnicity, and they spoke and their religion, they spoke against evil and support that which is good. We denounce evil. That's part of their role as light. Again, doing it respectfully, okay? And we love. Yeah, we provide pastoral care. Those who are hurting, those who are wounded. It's our role to minister help. Without whether they are believers or non believers, whether they support our party or not a party, you no, you just they are humans, okay? You are human. God loves you know humans. God lets his rain fall on righteous and righteous. We minister as as much as we can. So we, we minister uh, uh pastorally to them and provide help where they, where help is needed. That's part of our our living in a you know, as a uh, counterculture in a corrupt society of polity. Um, let me, time is going, let me just summarize by saying, uh, no. Yes, we, a, a church that's countercultural cannot avoid persecution. I mentioned that earlier. No, persecution is inevitable. Those that want to enter the kingdom of God have to endure persecution. The kingdom of God suffers violence, we are told, and the violence takes it by force. We will be persecuted. We will be that that will happen. We will be contradicted. We will be accused falsely. And perhaps we should rejoice when that happens. So we cannot because we you know, we are afraid of being contradicted or persecuted. To keep quiet and not do things and say things of you know uh, we're supposed to say and not condemn what we should condemn. Let me quickly read this and then I will end it. Um, in, John, in John chapter 15, verse 18 says, If the world hates you, Jesus is saying this, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. That the world, this world, they hated Jesus first and crucified him. See, they hate you. What is new? If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. So remember what I told you, verse 20. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. Take that to the bank. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. Say so they will treat you this way because of my name. It's nothing personal. <laughs> It's not because of his name. They don't like God. They don't like Jesus. So they will persecute you. No matter how, how, how we have good intention, no matter how much you've, you've been of help, they will persecute you. For they do not know the one who sent me. They don't know. Some people say that they, they worship God or they praise God. They, they, you know, they know, whatever. But they don't know the God that sent Jesus. And it just, the Bible says, if you do not, you know, if if you don't regard the Father, you do not regard the Son as well. You no, know? you don't regard the Son either. All right, let me leave it here. So. Just, I just highlighted some of these things that will enable us to live as a countercultural church in a corrupt polity. 
Now this applies, you know, to the church as a congregation. It applies to the individual Christians, you know, whether you're a church leader or not, wherever you are. If you, you know, you do, you shine the light. Like the children will see this little light of mine, I will, leave, I will make it shine. Shine the light and don't be afraid of their contradictions. Amen. Let me see my people here. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Olayinka, good evening. NST, how are you? Good evening. Yes, yes, don't worry, don't worry, no problem, no problem. Yes, we don't mark register here. Uh, may the Lord continue to strengthen the body to speak up against evil like our Lord did. God will judge, He will. Oh, I know that I find that so comforting. Olayinka, okay, I find that so comforting. We should come out from among them, walk right with God. We walk right with God. Yes. Yes. Declare our stance. Do what we need to do as citizens. Vote when we need to vote. And that, that's how to say it loud. Christians should vote when they need to vote. Yes. And vote based on the right parameters. Not who gave you money. Or who come from your tribe or your village. Okay. Our land. Thank you very much for joining me. This is uh, Every serial killer, and you've been watching uh, the Sentinel, which is the media arm of uh, Syndicate Ministries. So, yeah, some of the other things we've done in the past you can find on our YouTube channel, which is Syndicate TV. And uh, to know more about us, please visit our website, which is syndicateministries.org.uk. If you want to send us uh, a note, a message, a question, a uh, a query, criticism, it does not matter. Whatever it is, yes, you can reach us at info at syndicateministries.org.uk. With that, I say God be with you all week. God bless you. God be with you. <laughs>